live in lower Louisiana. We live on the coast. We live near the marsh. We live near the swamps. We do have areas that do flood down here, so we have to acknowledge the floodplain maps. Our ground has changed, our marshes have changed, our levees have changed. In 2002, Congress created the Flood Map Modernization Program known as MapMod. The goal of MapMod is to update all of the rate maps used by the National Flood Insurance Program from the existing paper maps to a new digital format. FEMA's schedule for digitizing Louisiana flood maps was aggressive. By 2005, some Louisiana coastal parishes already had preliminary flood maps. Then Hurricanes Katrina and Rita brought coastal mapping to a standstill. The damage caused by Katrina and Rita made it obvious that coastal mapping assumptions had to be updated. The federal government launched a project that combined the resources of FEMA, the Army Corps of Engineers, the Coastal Protection Authority, and leading scientists from across the nation to develop a new comprehensive approach to identify the current flooding risk to coastal Louisiana. One of the major advances in mapping technology selected by the team is known as LIDAR. It's a revolutionary way of capturing topographic information using ranging laser devices calibrated to ground-based GPS. Uh, when you start looking at the LIDAR data, you see every little bump and, and nook and cranny uh, that's down on the ground. Any kind of previous surveying technique was never able to give us this kind of detailed data. Right now we can get down to about a foot by foot pixels and that tell us how high the, the ground surface is. Using LiDAR data, a computer modeling program can then calculate the patterns flood water will follow during intense events. The Louisiana mapping team selected ADCIRC, the Advanced Circulation Model, to calculate storm surge for the Louisiana coast. Scientist Johannes Westering leads the ADCIRC team. The way ADCIRC works is we start with the, the equations that describe flow, and, and they really are a, rep, a mathematical representation of, of the processes occurring. There's many things that force this system. There's the tides, there's riverine flow, uh, there's, uh, there's, of course, the wind, the atmospheric pressure, uh, and there's also wave action that forces flows. And so we actually go all the way from Nova Scotia to Venezuela and model everything to the west of that. Each of these little areas that you see are, are triangles, and they're connected to each other through a vertex point. Each one of those points has an algebraic equation, a mathematical equation that's actually solved on the computer. And in fact, in this model, we have about uh, 2.1 million points, computational points, each of them computing surface water elevation and the currents, or the speed of the water, in, in the x and y directions. And, but we have 85 to 90 percent of those points in and around southern Louisiana and Mississippi. There's more complexity, more gradients, more changes in space uh, as you get onto the continental shelf. But then when you get into the floodplain and the rivers and the levee systems and the gullies and the, and the channels and the, the tremendously intricate complexities of the geographic system that we see in southern Louisiana, then you need to add a lot of resolution in order to capture these, these details. Essentially, force is equal to mass times acceleration on a, on a local element. So that's what we're keeping track of, momentum and, and mass. Um, the, the flood maps are based on not only the physics of, of the water flow and of the storm surge, but they're also based on, on uh, getting a, a correct statistical representation of the kinds of storms that can happen. About 160 storms were selected for southeastern Louisiana. A, another set was selected for southwestern Louisiana. We are able to really simulate not only the high water, but also the surge, the rise in the water, and the recession process. And that gives us a very good picture of what would happen in southern Louisiana 
for all the possible storms that can strike. We run recent storms to validate the models. We're very confident that we have a good physical representation of what happens during storms. We can't design most buildings to resist flood forces in, in coastal areas, so our only alternative then is to avoid those by elevating the buildings above the water surface during the flood. Chris Jones is a nationally recognized coastal engineer. He has worked extensively in Louisiana. We don't design buildings typically for individual storms. We look at a 1% annual chance storm or what's called a 100-year storm. With some of the models that are being used now like ADCIRC, they are providing more detailed information on flow velocities which we didn't have before. Safety is a relative term and it's a matter of probabilities and it comes down to what uh, risk are you willing to accept. Communities and the federal government have established the 1% annual chance flood as the minimum risk and you have to design and build to that level. But that doesn't mean that you won't get hit by a more severe storm. So many communities call for freeboard, which is building higher than the minimum requirement shown on the flood maps. Many people choose to do this voluntarily. By doing so, it costs more to, to build the building, but you will avoid damages in the future and you will see reduced flood insurance premiums. Look at the map over here and, and see where you're located and find out what flood zone you're in. Local officials play an important role in the National right. Flood Insurance Program. Pam Mattingly manages the NFIP in Calcasieu Parish. A third of our area is in the floodplain, so we have a lot of development going on in there. A lot of people want to develop in those areas. The new um, map, the maps will uh, increase the floodplain, so people that didn't have flood insurance before will have to get flood insurance now. There's some areas in the parish where we have higher standards than what FEMA requires, and because we've seen the um, history of that particular area. It affects the whole parish of what people do and if they don't comply then you know we could lose a whole the whole program people wouldn't be able to get flood insurance with the whole parish and that would be devastating for our area since we do have so much area in the floodplain. Mitch McDonald is the floodplain manager in Terrebonne Parish which adopted advisory base flood elevations after hurricanes Katrina and Rita. We know that there were homes built compliant to the existing, the existing flood insurance rate maps in Terrebonne parishes that had water in them. We know that. Yeah, I think we all realize that there's going to be some changes when the new maps come out. A lot of those homes down there have been there for, you know, decades. You know, started in the 60s and 50s, so you know there was no uh, elevation requirement at that time, and unfortunately, a lot of slab on grades. And we've been working you know, toward that here in the recent past to try to uh, help people elevate or demolish their house or relocate their home. We realize as a government here that uh, the need for new maps is there. The number of certified floodplain managers has increased significantly in Louisiana since the 2005 hurricane season. Linda Duyon runs the Office of Planning and Zoning in Vermilion Parish. We did not have any floodplain maps until 1985. And till this date, we're still using the 1985 floodplain maps. Our ground has changed, our marshes have changed, our levees have changed. And with our new floodplain maps, if we have another storm, definitely people will be more aware what to expect and more prepared, most definitely. Even though all these people had water in their homes, they're coming back and they're doing the right thing, elevating and doing surge protection and whatever it would take for them to come back to Vermilion Parish. Jefferson Parish floodplain manager, Tommy Rodrigue. I've been involved in mitigating repetitive loss structures for seven years prior to Katrina. We required the homeowners to elevate one foot above the current base flood elevation. And believe it or not, none of those homes flooded during the storm. It tells me that, you know, mitigation works. We, uh, we experienced uh, Katrina and uh, we had about 15 feet of water over our house and it was quite devastating. 
Yes, there is an emotional element involved here. And I think we all understand why we now have to build smarter and higher than what we did in the past if we, if we, wanna, if we want to uh, prevent the, uh, a reoccurrence of, of what we experienced during Katrina and Rita. The new FEMA maps are in a digital format. This allows communities and businesses to use Geographic Information Systems maps, or GIS, to quickly pinpoint the flood risk for precise locations like fire stations, hospitals, schools, and homes. The technology in itself right there is just, you know, bloomed. So instead of going through 30 different maps, you can just click on real quick. So that's helped us out tremendously. When you're using old maps, you're having to use a ruler and scale off, and you're having to measure from one point to another to try to predict or assume without a very high level of accuracy of exactly where a structure is. It can make a difference, whether it's you know, 100 feet this way or that way. People at home that have computers will be able to go on this site and find their location of their home and where they're located at. We're ready for the new floodplain maps and uh, we're excited. Hurricanes Rita and Katrina focused everyone in southern Louisiana on the risk of flooding. The process of adopting and using new flood risk maps has not taken place here in many years. Everyone is urged to take time to become informed and learn what impact the new digital flood insurance rate maps will have on you. Simply log on to lamappingproject.com and type in your street address. Talk to your agent, your friends, and your neighbors, and let your local officials know that you support them in making your community smarter, safer, and stronger. This video was produced by the Louisiana Gulf Coast Mapping Project, known as LAMP. The LAMP team includes the Gulf Coast Recovery Office, FEMA Region 6, the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development NFIP Coordinating Office, and the Louisiana Transitional Recovery Office.